Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. I'll be reading this morning from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. And this is what it says. Now on the same occasion, there were some present who reported to him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were greater sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this fate? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or do you suppose that those 18 on whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed were worse culprits than all the men who live in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he began telling this parable. A certain man had a fig tree which had been planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and did not find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, Behold, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this tree without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? And he answered and said to him, Let it alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, cut it down. Pray with me. Jesus, you tell us where two or three are gathered in your name, that you're in our midst, that you're here, not because we're so good, but because you are. And may we never take that for granted. Open our eyes and ears that we may see and hear your presence this day, this time. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It was just about 112 years ago I was a senior in college. I was a religion and philosophy major at LaGrange College, and I had my plan, and I was working my plan. I was doing my, my undergraduate, my bachelor's degree in religion and philosophy. I was going to go on to seminary to Emory for three years after that. That's when the district superintendent from LaGrange District of the Methodist Church called the the head of the religion department and said, do you have a senior who might be willing to interview to see about taking a church while they're in seminary. Well, he gave him my name and I went and interviewed. And I was appointed to a little church down in LaGrange, Georgia. Average age was about 76, 77, something like that. And that was my youth group. Yeah, they got much older. I, there was a woman in my church had a great grandson older than I was. I was about the youngest thing they'd ever seen before. They were the most gracious people in the world and forgiving. I'll go ahead and tell you that some of those sermons were just plain stinkers. They were the best ones I had, but gracious, gracious people. Well, after that, I was in, in seminary at Emory and commuted from LaGrange for three years. And then I was appointed to my first church after seminary. It was in a small town, very small town, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And I got to be friends with the Episcopal priest there. He and I had a lot of the same interests. And one of those interests was cars. 
Now, we didn't have much money, but we did like cars. So we pitched in together and we bought a little MGB convertible. Now, if you know much about cars, you know that an MGB is not much of a car. Uh, it gives you lots of opportunities, opportunities to walk, opportunities to phone a friend. Gives you a lot of opportunities to work on a car when you intended to drive it. And I got quite an education working on that MG. Each week we would switch off who had th that week as half owner in the car. Well, my weeks, usually what would happen is after work I would put the top down and I'd turn up the music and I'd, I had this great big loop that I would drive out in the country. Well, this particular day, I, I was driving that great big loop. When I started to come back into town, the road was closed, so I had to turn around. And about the time I, I turned around in the road, I was driving, and I, I, it sounded like somebody was honking the horn from the back seat of my car. I looked in the rearview mirror, and sure enough, they just about were. All I could see was grill in the rearview mirror. The, 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 the pickup truck behind me was so close, I couldn't tell what kind it was or who was in it. All I could see was grill in the rearview mirror. And that truck pulled around beside me, and three of the biggest human beings God ever breathed breath into were crammed into the front end of that pickup truck. They looked like Superman's older brothers. And the, one of the passengers started banging on the side of the truck, told me to pull over. Well, I was in an MG, and I, there was no way I was going to outrun them, so I pulled over. And then the driver began to get out. I say he began to get out because he was so big it took him a while. He began to unravel and there was just more and more of him started coming out of the, the driver's side of that guy. And he was mad. He came and he started cussing at me, calling me everything but a child of God. He said my car had thrown up a rock and that I had busted his windshield and I was just showing off and that's all I was doing. And I said, no, I... I, I if I busted your windshield, I'll pay for it. So I, I reached in my coat pocket, and I pulled out my wallet, and I, I gave him $30. It was all the money I had, and I, I gave him $30. Well, when he put the money into his pocket, same pocket, he pulled out a gun. He hooked the gun up under my jaw, and he pushed me over in the seat. He said, you were showing off, and I'm going to blow your head off. And I said, no, if I was showing off, I wouldn't have stopped my car. Well, that made him pause for just a little bit. He kept shouting and screaming and cussing at me and pushing with the, the, the pistol up under my jaw, telling me he was going to blow my head off. And I said, I wouldn't have stopped if I was showing off. If I owe you more money, let me know. He put the gun in his pocket. He stepped back and he said, get out of the car. I'm going to stomp you all over the highway. Well, I think I came up to his waist. I'm not real sure, but I, th I might have come a little past his waist. But this guy was huge. He was carved out of granite. And I looked up at him when he said, I'm going to stomp you all over the highway. I looked, I said, I think you could probably do it. Well, I don't think he was accustomed to hearing that. I think he was much more accustomed to bar fights. You push and somebody pushes back. Well... When I said, I think you could probably do it, he, he kind of started stuttering in his eyes a little bit. And he stepped back and he said, come look at my windshield. See how you busted it. Well, I got out of the car. I looked and sure enough, there was, there was just a little bit, it looked like an asterisk. You know how they looked, a little chink in the windshield. I said, yeah, it's busted. And if I owe you more money, I'll, I'll be glad to pay you. I gave you $30. And I said, why don't you give me your name and address and I'll, I'll send you more money. He said, no, you'll call the law on me. I said, no, I, I probably wouldn't do that. I, I, just give me your name and address. And he said, no, do you have a business card? Well, I had to think about it a little bit. There was a woman in my church that as soon as I moved there, she made me 500 business cards because it was a part of her business. And, and I had never used one of them, but I did put them in the coat pocket of all my coats. And I thought about it for a little bit. I said, yes, I do. And I pulled it out and, and, and it said, Reverend Thomas C. Davis. Now, I'm going to set the stage for you. I was 25 years old and I looked like I was 12. So I grew a mustache. So I looked like a 12-year-old with a mustache. 
And he's looking at my business card very intently. And he said, are you Reverend Davis? And I said, yes. Well, then this big tear began to form in the corner of his eye. And he said, I didn't know you were with the church. I said, yes. And then he began crying. He said, God's been working on my temper. And I'm thinking, that, it was worse before? <laughs> I'm thinking, it, it, wow, it must have been really bad if this is the best God can do. And then he said, preacher, I want you to pray for me. And I said, buddy, I've been praying for me and you both from the time you stepped out of your truck. And then he, he broke down crying. He said, I know you must have been. I, I know you must have been praying for me because I was going to. I said, I know you were going to. And, and so he started crying and we prayed together on the side of the road. And he got in his truck and he drove off. Well, that kind of thing doesn't happen to me every week. You know, sometimes a whole month will go by before somebody pulls a gun on me. And that kind of thing is the kind of thing that, well, it, 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 it wound up in the sermon that Sunday. It couldn't help it. It just, it, the, the sermon I preached every minute of every day from that point until Sunday, it, it somehow involved that, that story. And so it wound up in the sermon on Sunday and Wonderful church, great church, fantastic church, great, wonderful, gracious people. But do you know what the number one comment was as people were leaving? And a lot of people said it, not just one or two, a lot of people. Far and away, the number one comment was, what were you doing there? What were you doing there? Do you hear what's implied What's implied is if, if you weren't in the wrong place, if you weren't there at the wrong time, bad things don't happen to good people. Don't you know that? It, you, we've got to point to somebody. There's some, some blame here. And, you know, we'll, we'll spread it around. It, 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 you were at the wrong place in the wrong time. Bad things don't happen to good people. And it's human nature. It's human nature to, to, to feel like, well, some, if, if, if evil can't be so present that we brush up against it every day, it must be somebody goes looking for it or in their wrong place or wrong time or they've done something wrong. Wrong is involved here if, if people brush up to evil. Did you know Jesus talks about that? We read about it this morning. Some people came to Jesus with an event that had happened that some folks were going from, Gal they were walking from Galilee to the temple in Jerusalem to offer their sacrifices there at the temple. Now, there aren't many things that are as good as that. They were serving God. They were worshiping God. They were on their way, and it's a, it's a hike. It's a long walk from Galilee to Jerusalem. And they were, going, they were taking that long, long walk to, to serve God, to give praise to God. And Pilate, he kills them. He slaughters them, and he mixes their blood with their sacrifices. And they couldn't imagine anything worse so Jesus says, do you think these were the worst sinners of, of all the people in Galilee? He has a quick answer for that. And the answer is no. And then he goes on to say, and I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. What a strange thing. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Jesus sees what they're doing, that their, their eyes have, have, have moved from, from God to evil. And when our eyes move to evil, it, it, we tend to be transfixed by evil and the power of evil. And we want to respond with evil with evil. Well, somebody must have done evil for, for, for this to happen. That somebody is responsible here. And anger or despair are the two most common responses that folks have. It's happened again. It's happened again. 
there in Uvalde, Texas? Evil. Evil. That's the only word for it. It's just plain evil. They're in Buffalo, New York. Here in Atlanta, Georgia. Methodist minister. Serving God. It's murdered. Evil. Evil is the word for it. Ah, and we've seen the responses. People want to respond. Evil with evil. Quit thinking and praying. Let's do something. You've got to do something other than think and pray. Let's do something. It's got to be somebody's fault. And everybody's pointing at somebody because they're sure that it's, it's somebody's fault. And they've turned from God to evil. Transfixed by evil. Let's answer evil with evil. And maybe if we, we fight enough with each other about evil, then we'll get an answer. And Jesus says, repent. 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 Turn from the evil and turn toward God. I think this is what Harry Emerson Fosdick was talking about. when He, he talked about, you know, there's some things, there's some things that God won't do for us, but that God won't do without us. God won't do for us, but God won't do without us. One of those things is that God won't think for us, but he won't think without us. That God never, never put the answer is in the clouds and, and wrote it across the sky. He never gave us direction by opening up fortune cookie and we pull out the answer for every day and we just don't have to think about it. That God won't think for us, but he won't think without us. That together, together, we cooperate with God and, and we think with our eyes on God Jesus said, love the Lord your God with heart, soul, and your mind and your strength. Thinking, thinking, it's a, it's a part of our relationship with God. So often, evil calls us to react. Not to think, to react. To do what comes most natural. Without thinking. But it's not only thinking, that it's working. That work. That's something that, that God won't do for us, and he, but he won't do without us. That God never made a, a needle. God never made a, a jet engine. But he did fill the mountains with ore. And together, together, we work together to further his will on earth. When our, when our eyes are toward him, that, that we love him with heart, soul, mind, and strength. The strength of our work. But if there's some things that God won't do for us, but he won't do without us, certainly prayer is one of those things that we do together. Together. That we, we, we repent, we, we turn from the reaction. We turn from the, the evil of, of anger and, and despair. And we turn toward him. So Jesus tells a parable after this. We read it this morning about a a fig tree that wasn't bearing fruit. Didn't do anything except take up space. And so the landowner turned to the gardener and said, cut it down. It's only taking up space. But the gardener intervened and said, I'll dig, I'll fertilize, I'll work, I'll water. 
Evil is real. But you're not alone. We've got a gardener. And the gardener's name is Jesus. And what he did was he gave his life on the cross. And on the cross, he defeated evil. It doesn't mean that it's not real. It doesn't mean that suffering's not real. It just means it's defeated. And when he rose from the grave, he gave us power. Power that together we might think, together we might work, together with the, the Spirit of God, we might pray. And be a part of God's business. His creation. His new creation right here in the middle of the old one. Set loose to do his will. This morning. It may be that you're angry. It may be that you're despairing. It may be that your eyes are on the hurt, the anguish, the evil. Because it's real. But Jesus, but Jesus is more real. Repent. And turn toward him with heart and soul and mind and strength and prayer. We may not can do all things, but we can, with the help of the risen Christ, do his will that he's called for you. And me, this day, that we can repent and, and turn away from the evil, turn toward Him. And together, with the Spirit of God, do His will this day. He's got power. He rose from the grave to give us that power to share with you and me. And I want to pray with you this morning. Let's pray. Jesus, there are times like this that um, we feel our strength taken from us. When our eyes are on evil, we feel our strength taken from us. It's not what you intended. It's why you nailed evil to the cross. All those things that would defeat us and take, take away our, our ability to think and to work, and to pray. You took away that power, and you rose from the grave to give power to us. Jesus, breathe the power of your Spirit on us. That we can't do all things, but you've called us to do some things. Certainly think, certainly work, and certainly pray are three of those things. And give us those eyes that see right here where we're planted the fruit that we might produce. Not what somebody else ought to be doing or what they're not doing, but what you've called us to this day, this time. Breathe your spirit on us. Grant us that strength. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. 
Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.